How are you? I'm pretty good. I had a tough weekend. Yeah. My grandmother passed away this weekend, so something, you know, hard. She mm -hmm. raised me, so she's like my mom and my dad. I'm so sorry. You know, I feel like abuelas and abuelitas really be filling in, mm -hmm. like, so many roles. They do. All in just one person. That's like, very true. That's that magic they got, you know? How are you feeling? I'm good. I'm, you know, mom life. That's a 2 7 job. Ain't no days off. That's true. <laughs> So many of us have had opportunities to create chosen family, but so mm -hmm. many people haven't at the same time. That's true. Right? And I think that's something that our generation is kind of exploring in a way that, you know, whether it's our parents or our grandparents didn't have the same opportunity to mm -hmm. explore. I wanted to know more about, like, you know, what's your experience with that? For me, it was tough. I had to leave home at a very early age, and not because my family didn't accept me, or respect me, but it was more so that they didn't understand. And I didn't understand my own transition. So I left home and I was able to found, find, you know, the LGBT community and have people that were there. And I joined the ballroom community, mm -hmm. which is, you know, where my family, my chosen family really, really comes from. And it's been pretty good. I, I was able to have people there that were, were showing me the way and, you know, telling me things that I didn't know and just teaching me about life. and. The fact that th they also went through those things, it made things a little bit easier for me. No, absolutely. And I'm sure that that was like one of those moments where you really felt seen. When it came to my chosen family, I was receiving those flowers every day from my followers and my believers in the world. I was receiving those flowers and I needed that for my family. And after finally accepting that and, and receiving that from them, it felt good because for a very long time, I struggled wondering whether they were proud of me and, you know, the woman that I became, the things that I've done in life. Because even though I'm proud of it, we still need we that still for my need family. That. I was transitioning and at the yeah. time, people didn't even really know about transitioning, especially Spanish but families. I was going to say, you already know it's not You know, especially the like, Latino families, yeah, you know, they don't no. really know. Everything is just under one umbrella. And yeah. You know, I, it, it was tough, but to this day, you know, I love the, the relationship that I had with my real family as well after becoming mm -hmm. an adult and actually finding myself. That's when I came back home and I was yeah. able to show them like, hey, this is who I am. Like, check me and, out. And it, I didn't want to deal with those trials and tribulations of like the change for them mm -hmm. and things like that. But I also gave them space because yeah. I understood that everybody want to be on top tier, yes. perfect. And it's like, no, I, I like to tell people <laughs> that I was homeless one time. And I like to tell people that because of ballroom, I was able to survive competing yes. and making money through ballroom is the reason why a lot of times I was able to eat. And like the show Legendary, like it's so beautiful for people to see the family aspect of that show yes. and to see how important chosen family is. Nowadays, you know, families are more accepting, you know, you're not, they're not going to kick their children out as much yes. as they used to 10, 15 years ago. But um, a show like Legendary, it, it, it gives people a sense of seeing the LGBT community in human eyes, yeah. which sucks to even have to say that. I think it's really nice that you got to, you know, go back, right, and have this moment of connection and understanding with your blood family, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, I think when we don't get to have that chosen family, it's harder for us to go back, right? It because is. We just want to feel accepted. We just want to feel seen. And when we don't feel that way by anybody, mm -hmm. it makes it difficult for us to consider, yes. right, what our blood family was thinking because we just want to be seen so badly yeah. by someone. And it know? takes trust, you know, Absolutely. to open up to someone and to not know what they're going to, you know, how they're going to react and how they're going to take it. That's, that's been tough. And that's something that with me, I had to learn to trust people in so many different ways. And, you know, it's something that is hard, you know, you, we go through things where it makes us pull back. But I feel like that's something important, being able to trust somebody and to be able to share your story and to be heard and understood. But I also realized like that was me having difficulty with trusting people. Yeah, and right? opening up. Yeah, and so it's like I, you know, like I shared like really compartmentalized parts of myself, right, mm. as opposed to the whole picture. That's what's so special, right, is we can't help but compare to these people who made such a difference in our lives, mm -hmm. who we are related to by blood. And we kind of almost seek out 
mirroring that in our chosen family, right? But in a way that is more tailored to who we are, what mm -hmm. we're experiencing, what we're moving through in life. And that's what's so beautiful about chosen family, right? It's like For me, it was the opposite. So because with my family, they're more like conservative. Yeah. They don't like people knowing their business and like they don't really talk about their feelings and like they don't share yeah. emotions. And I'm the complete opposite. Like going into the world and coming across my chosen family and being a part of the LGBT community and just being a public figure, I had to tell myself, like I had to sit down and tell myself, I don't want to be one of those people that it's like a facade or it's just for play. I want people to relate to me because I bleed too and I cry and I laugh and I have emotions and I have mental health issues and you know, I, I go through things in life and I feel like the more relatable you are with people, the more you can inspire. I went through so much in ballroom, like I had so much negativity when it came to the competition world. Like it was so bad because I was so good. Yeah, I can imagine. But I have to tell myself, like, do you want to become the pain or do you want to become the light? Release expectations. And be fully present. 